Hello and welcome to the session of the Denver Democracy Center. I'm Jonas Prol Plesner, Executive Director at the Alliance of Democracies Foundation. I'm also really delighted to be joined by Digital Minister Audrey Tang from Taiwan for this keynote session on protecting democracy from disinformation, the case of Taiwan. Welcome, Minister. Hi, good local time, everyone. Great to see you again. I went to uh, Taiwan last year for the presidential election in January and, 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 and met with you there and witnessed firsthand some of the innovative tactics for combating disinformation um, and, and also foreign driven election interference from, uh, from China. Um, and as part of your uh, approach minister with radical transparency, that conversation at that time was recorded and is still sort of publicly fully accessible. And I know all of your official meetings and, and text and everything with, with people, they were all sort of publicly available, um, again, as part of that sort of openness to combat uh, disinformation. So um, it's a pleasure to have you here again uh, virtually, and together we'll focus on Taiwan's effort to engage both citizen, business and civil society in the government's fight against disinformation. And we'll also talk about what other democracies can learn from uh, Taiwan. So uh, my first question is, uh, really about what Taiwan has done to curb disinformation, both in elections and during the pandemic. Yeah, um, the Taiwan model of countering the pandemic, um, easy to remember, it's called uh, countering the pandemic uh, with no lockdown and countering the infodemic with no takedown. And we do so via humor. Uh, the playbook is uh, called humor over rumor. That is to say, whenever there is any trending myths or disinformation, we make sure that within a couple hours, for example, as you can see here, there's a very cute dog here uh, that explains uh, physical distancing in terms of indoors, three Shiba Inus away from one another, two Shiba Inus away from one another if it's outdoors. And it's uh, very difficult to unsee uh, that clarification. And because it's so cute and harmless, uh, people remix and share it all the time. As soon as the clarifications and the science uh, reaches more people uh, in a way that's humorous, the um, outrage that the disinformation travels on dissipates. People stop sharing conspiracy theories and so on because there's something equally interesting and even more scientifically correct uh, for people to share. Uh, but the real challenge is how to detect the trending misinformation, disinformation uh, before it reaches majority of population. This is uh, not unlike detecting a virus. And so we do so by what we call a people public private partnership having the social sector forming those early advanced warning systems including uh, virus um, like companies like uh, Trend Micro, uh, including, uh, for example, the COFAX uh, project from the GovZero uh, Collective, and many people who just report any misinformation, disinformation, but not to the government, but rather to the social sector, fact checkers and journalists. That's really interesting because you, of course, come from a background having been a software engineer, a hacker you know, of sort, even would put on your, your bio and from the sort of civic tech community of, of Taiwan. Do you think that's unique to, to, to Taiwan that you you have this very engaged uh, uh, citizenry and, and very engaged um, uh, software community uh, around this or something the rest of us can also replicate? I think it's... Uh quite pervasive in pretty much all jurisdictions. Uh, there are, for example, chapters of the Code for All network uh, around the globe. So there's no shortage of civic technologists. Uh, but I think in Taiwan, our uh, unique configuration is such that we're a very young democracy. Our first presidential election was in 1996, which is already after the World Web gets popular. So in our mind, democracy is a set of technologies. Uh, that is to say, instead of having, you know, hundreds of years of traditions uh, to us, democracy is not just uploading three bits per person every four years, which is called voting, by the way. But from the very beginning of our democratization, we think of day to day democracy uh, through deliberative meetings, participatory budgeting, sandboxes, presidential hackers on e-petition, you name it. Uh, all these increase the bandwidth between the social sector and the public sector when it comes to collective decision making. And so that in turn informed uh, our social sector to form like uh, the Taiwan Fact Check Center and many other response systems that just as we countered the spawn um, decades ago uh, by setting up voluntary report as spawn 
buttons in all the email um, reading agents uh, and having a global spam house network to send out the signals that uh, can flag something as spam before it hits our inbox that goes to a junk mail folder. Similarly, a immune system like this operated by the voluntary sector um, is configured in time much more easily because people think of democracy as something that we can contribute, not just uh, for the professional uh, career public servants. And it works. People actually do this. Yes, uh, the uh, K to 12 curriculum, which I'm one of the designers, specifically emphasized uh, instead of media literacy like we did in last century, uh, we now say media competence. Literacy is when you're readers and viewers of media. Competence is when you're producers of media. And because Taiwan has broadband as a human right, so any primary school student, middle school student have access to broadband at just 16 US dollars per month for unlimited data. Otherwise, it's my fault. So they can actually fact check very easily. And they did that. Uh, for example, in last year's uh, presidential election, there's plenty of students that fact check all the three presidential candidates, public debate and platform uh, on the uh, kind of cross check platform so that they can contribute to the newsroom in conjunction with the social media and the professional uh, mainstream media. Uh, they uh, just look at every Everything that the presidential candidates uttered. And once they have this experience, it's actually very difficult for them to go back to conspiracy theories because they have engaged in finding out the facts together. That's very interesting. Of course, in, in Europe and in the US at the moment, we're discussing a lot on disinformation of like the, the um, uh, what the social media platforms have a responsibility that they should take down more than something and should label and so on. But but your approach seems. Do you think we, that that you don't even need that, or, or would there still also be a need for for a better regulation of of social media companies on disinformation? So instead of regulations, uh, here we have the norms set up by the social sector. For example, the GovZero uh, movement um, a few years ago uh, started a campaign to uh, get the National Auditing Office to publish the campaign donation expenditure as open data, raw data for all the investigative journalists uh, to look at. Now, once they get what they uh, wanted uh, in 2018, the National Auditing Office did publish these, uh, then we discovered that um, none of the social media expenditure is filed as campaign finance. And that's obviously a loophole because in Taiwanese law, only domestic people can contribute to campaign uh, donation, but foreign interference uh, kind of find a shortcut uh, through the social media advertisements. So we talked to Facebook and uh, other social media companies saying, look, there's already a very strong social sector norm and they convinced the public sector to comply, to do the same. And now it's your turn. If you do not publish your advertisement library in real time in the same sort of uh, raw data and open data as our national audit office did, well, we don't have any regulations against you, but you may face social sanction. And in Taiwan social sanction is really strong. So in 2019, Facebook um, uh, worked with uh, us so that Taiwan became, uh, I think, the first jurisdiction that they published uh, in real time, the advertisement library we pertain to political or social uh, sponsorship uh, um, advertisement. But the other thing that you just mentioned, uh, which is the public labeling, we do that too. And we call it notice and public notice. So for example, here is uh, something that was making the rounds uh, around the uh, presidential election that says, and I quote, um, uh, Hong Kong sucks compensation exposed. Killing a police earns those teenagers up to 20 million. That's, of course, um, like intentionally uh, wrong information, but the photo is legit. It's a Reuters photo. So the Taiwan Fact Check Center, after enough people flagged it for review, actually found the alternate caption. Uh, the original Reuters uh, photo said nothing about being paid to kill police. It just said there are uh, young people in the protest. Uh, but the uh, alternate caption came from Zhongyang Zhenfa Wei Chang Anjian, the central political and law unit of the Chinese Communist Party. So instead of taking anything down. We just put a public notice and with the collaboration of Facebook and other social media platforms, people who share this alternate caption, they can still share it, but everyone see that the Taiwan Fact Check Center has already um, shown that the original uh, alternate caption came from the Weibo of the Zhongyang Zhenfa Wei.
That's a fascinating example. Minister Tang, we're actually about to come to a close, but like the panel that follows after us is of course going to continue the discussion of this information. So if you had just one um, piece of advice uh, to them, what would be sort of the most uh, important takeaway on, on disinformation for their discussion? So I tend to think of the infodemic uh, as just like the pandemic, uh, that if people wear a mask and wash their hands, uh, then uh, it's of course reduced the R value. And this is similar to the notice and public notice uh, that I just described. But to actually fix it, uh, it really requires a contextual understanding uh, in a more holistic way, the policy question. And so through radical transparency, through citizen deliberation, I do believe by listening at scale, that's the vaccine of the mind uh, that can truly guard us for the long run against infodemics. Thank you, Minister Tang. These have been really illuminating examples and a great way for the audience to hear about Taiwan and your personal experience with combating disinformation. And it's also a perfect introduction to the next panel, which uh, will, will also discuss information and can, of course, draw on some of the experiences which uh, Taiwan has brought forward. Once again, thank you. Thank you. Live long and prosper. You too.